I had heard that Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood was coming to PC and consoles, I was immediately interested for several reasons. First, I'm a longtime World of Darkness tabletop role-playing game player and dungeon master. Back when it started under the White Wolf umbrella, up through its newest incarnations under Onyx Path Publishing. So when I heard developer Cyanide and publisher Nacon were going to create an Unreal Engine 4 adaptation, let's just say I was very ready to play the game. This is where I expected the game to shine, as there's a ton of source material discussing the Garu, the werewolf packs that live in cairns and fight to protect Gaia from the taint of the worm. And those things are in the game by name, but unfortunately the story is a huge misstep. Let's take a very small snippet of dialogue from the first few minutes of the game. The game's designers and storytellers need to impart to you that you're married to the pack leader's sister. There are several ways they could communicate this information to you as you're speaking to the pack leader. Number one, they could use inclusive dialogue. An example of this would be Kahal. You knew when you married my sister 13 years ago that once she's made up her mind about something, she's not likely to change it. And I don't know why you'd expect that to be different now. Or they could use instructive dialogue. An example of this would be, your wife's my sister, Kahal. Don't forget that. The instructive dialogue is the wrong choice here because your character's been married to her long enough to have an almost fully grown teenage daughter, and no person in their right mind would ever say that to you after the first year or two. So the game takes every opportunity to use instructive dialogue instead of inclusive dialogue, and because of that, the overall story suffers. Not to mention that Kahal has a cairn but doesn't have a cairn, is loyal to the pack but isn't loyal to the pack, uh, even the very introduction is a missed opportunity to explain the lore of the game, showcase why we should care about these characters and hopefully get us attached to them before bad things start happening. But it doesn't happen that way at all. By the halfway point of the game, I was fairly uninvested as the writers made just about all the characters very unintelligent and unrealistic in the way they thought and acted. The storylines are in service of the gameplay elements instead of actually desiring to tell a meaningful story. In their promo materials, they had mentioned being able to learn about other werewolf packs. There's exactly one other tribe that you can interact with, so I guess technically they lived up to their promise. At two other points in the game, there's a second tribe introduced as opposing you with no explanation of who they are, what they stand for, or why they oppose you. I had thought by the end of the game we'd learn about them, but sadly, another missed opportunity. When you watch the trailers and even the intro movie, it's filled with metal, hard rock, and lots of werewolf slashing action. Don't be fooled, this is not that game. In fact, the majority of the game is a stealth game like Metal Gear Solid, but not as rewarding. To facilitate the different portions of the game, there are three modes of, of shape changing to play as. Lupus, which is a wolf, Hamid, which is human, and Krinos, which is werewolf. You can shift between Lupus and Hamid on demand, and that's actually a good thing about the control system. Unfortunately, the gameplay loop consists of the exact same scenario for the entire game. Cutscene to establish a mission, enter a room to stealth through and kill the opponents, or bypass them using wolf form to go through the vents with only one entrance and one exit almost always, get attacked and turn into a werewolf for the hack and slash section when you fail said stealth mission, mainly because there are lots of enemies you can't take down via stealth. This is the formula for 99% of the game. Occasionally there's a side mission that is vaguely hinted at, but no way to find as there are only sometimes indicators directing you where to go for such missions. Most of the time, you can just murder everyone in the room and move forward. When you do successfully stealth to control rooms, you can turn off alert cameras and disable turrets, but nine times out of 10, you'll have to fight your way out of every room regardless. The game also suffers from the enemy never misses and everyone knows exactly where you are syndromes once combat starts. During the first six hours, I was fine with the gameplay loop. Add another four hours and I was growing tired of it as the later levels bottlenecked some entrances to rooms so you couldn't even stealth through. By the time I had finished 12 hours, I was wishing the game had been over four hours ago. 
It doesn't help that enemies can sometimes miraculously see you behind objects and barriers while you're in stealth mode, even when you've spent points in the skill trees to make it more difficult to be detected. The hack and slash element becomes more difficult, and by that I mean not more tactical or thoughtful, just harder, because enemies have more health, do more damage, and gain area of effect attacks as the game progresses. There's an alternate view mode, a rage or spirit vision if you will, and while you can interact with spirits in this mode, there really isn't a benefit or mechanic in doing so other than smelling statues and plants to gain more skill points to invest in your skill trees. I had thought this would be a great way to differentiate the spirituality of the Garu and learn more about how they perceive the world, but instead, this was another throwaway mechanic. Did I mention you drink bottles of alcohol to fill your rage meter? I'm pretty sure Kahan is a lush. There are no puzzles to speak of, mostly find and fetch quests. The worst part of the game for me is the video game logic. Humans use guns, and you use explosives in the beginning of the game, but should we make things easier on ourselves and use some guns also, instead of purely being a close combat machine? Of course not. Why? Well, some packs in the tabletop game are adverse to using technology and man-made weapons, but not for Kahan. Half the time he's using computers to disable cameras, doors, and turrets. So why not just pick up a gun off of the 3,000 dead bodies in his wake? The game does have a crossbow, but it's useless as can be since anyone in line of sight of the person being shot immediately is alerted. Daniel, our creative director and also huge werewolf, world of the darkness DM player fan, slash etc., was playing the PS4 version for our second opinion section, which will be at the end of the review, when his son asked him the perfect question. Dad, why does this enemy base you're infiltrating where everyone only uses guns have crossbow bolts lying around for you to take? Out of the mouth of babes. Also, if I'm an evil corporation mining the secrets of the world, and I know my enemies are werewolves, and I've captured and killed many werewolves and know their powers of shape-shifting, why would I build wolf-sized holes into my air duct system in every building and facility I own, even at sea? Dialogue choices have no influence on the story whatsoever. You can choose to listen to them all or not. Load times are under a second on the PS5. There's really no time where you need to wait for any loading, and that's a triumph and helps showcase why people purchase the system. On the PS5, there are moments. Moments where you have the full moon in front of you and Kahal's highest polygon count out of all of the characters, and you could say it looks good. And then you look at any other character, bug-eyed, unblinking, and lower polygon count, and realize that the game is subpar. In fact, the only reason Kahal looks better than the other characters is because they have him frozen uh, mid-snarl. He's pretty much always looking upset which is better than the blank and bug-eyed stare that every other model has. Character animations or standard actions, walking, running, jumping, etc. are good and look good. However, sometimes characters will point or make a motion and their hands bend backwards at unnatural angles. The soundtrack is good and scores the scene well, setting a definite mood. The voice acting is good to very good. Although there are a couple individual performances, the big bad among them, that are noticeably subpar. Menus and skill trees are easy to understand and navigate. Cutscenes are generally well put together pieces. While this review may seem less than positive, I'd like to commend the developers. I can see the game they were striving for in the design elements in their finished product. I hope the game sells well enough that the developers can take what they've learned from this release and have another at-bat. The IP has a rich, deep lore that's barely been scratched with this game. The combat mechanics are fun, to a point, and the seamless transition between Wolf and Man is a unique feeling mechanic that does become like second nature as you play. And if I was a kid or someone receiving this game as a gift, I would not be upset. I myself have played many games over the years that critics did not like and considered them guilty pleasures, or also what I could afford at that point. 
However, if you're investing with your own money and time, while the core gameplay loop can be fun, repetitive scenarios and poor storytelling and writing lead to an ultimately unfulfilling game. As much as I'd like to howl at the moon with this game's praises, I'm instead giving in to the fury. Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood gets 5.5 out of 10 rage-inducing alcohol bottles. <laughs>